Hi everybody, this is Corey, and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. I'm really happy that you're here. Thank you so much for returning to all my subscribers. Really appreciate your support. And if you are new, I hope that you'll consider subscribing and be sure to hit the little bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. For today, we are full on fall and I have four projects for you. Hope you'll stick around and watch to the end. So let's get started. Here we go with DIY number one. So for this project, I have three little wooden pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. They have these little sayings on them and are covered with glitter. And then we're going to be using the Dollar Tree sanding sponge, some Mod Podge, and a few sheets of paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to start out by taking the sanding sponge and removing all of the glitter from the little pumpkins. So once that's done, we're going to take our little sheets. I'm showing you that they have 69 cents on the back there, but they were actually four for a dollar at Hobby Lobby. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. And they have a lot of cute paper. We're going to trace our wooden pumpkins on the back here and then just cut that out. And we're going to do that for all three of the designs that I picked out. So uh, once those are all cut out, um, I do like the little raffia bows on there. So I had decided to leave them on. I'm going to end up taking those off later. You'll see because they just ended up getting in the way. But for the time being, I left them on and I'm just using the Mod Podge to give a nice coat so that we can apply the papers that we cut out. And I ended up removing more of the Mod Podge here than I probably should have because I somehow managed to end up with little um, air bubbles underneath. Now that probably was also a function of not smoothing it all down as much as I probably should have. Um, I was wishing that I'd gone back in with my little um, silhouette vinyl tool to kind of um, burnish it, if you will. So if you do this project, I would recommend doing that because smoothing it out with my knuckles like I just did just ended up not being sufficient. So once we have all of the papers applied, I'm going to use the sanding block or sanding sponge again and just rough up the edges. I'm taking off the paper that is creeping over the edge a little bit, but then also making it a little bit worn along those edges. And then I'm also going to rough up a little bit of the surface of the paper just to give it a little bit more interest. I did also rough up that little stem so it wasn't quite so perfect and here you can see I've started to take off the little raffia bows because again they were just getting in my way and I'll just put those on again later with some hot glue. So here we are going over the tops of the little pumpkins the paper once I've got everything sanded the way I liked it. Um, with some Mod Podge just to seal that all in. I did the tops and the sides, but I did not do the backs. I actually like the way the backs look, and I'm debating whether or not to put something else on there. I haven't done that yet, but I don't know. I might revisit this little project and put like eye on one, a heart on the other, and then fall on the back. But if you have any suggestions on what I might put on the backs of these little pumpkins, that would be fantastic. Let me know in the comments. So DIY number two, here we go. 
So this is a little vase, I think, and it's got a fun shape. As soon as I saw it, I thought mushroom. Is that what you're thinking? This is something that my sister gave me. She uh, gave me a whole bunch of different things, but I've got salmon chalk paint and Java chalk paint, as well as sheepskin, which is like an ivory color. So I'm going to start out with the sheepskin and do the little base of my mushroom. And that's why I was saying my sister gave me a whole box of stuff that she was clearing out. And she thought maybe I'd be able to do something with it. And uh, when I saw this, I immediately had this idea. So this is the little project I'm doing first from the stash my sister provided. So thanks, Kim. It's wonderful to have supportive family. Now you've heard me say in some of my other videos, if you've been watching me from the beginning, that I have not done a lot with paint in the past. I mean, other than just regular paint jobs, but um, I am not a fine painter. <laughs> I don't have a lot of um, experience with technique or anything of that nature. So I am learning this and experimenting as I go. So if I can do it, you can do it. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment with it. It's just paint. You can always paint over it. Um, and having watched some of my whom I consider mentors and YouTube crafting channels um, that, you know, if, if you layer the paint and just keep working with it, eventually you are likely to get to what you're looking for or something even beyond what you anticipated being able to do. So I've actually been really enjoying this journey with learning some more skills with paint. So I had done the base and then I started out with the salmon color on the top part of my mushroom to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm trying to think about where the shadows would most likely be and where the light would be hitting my mushroom if the sun were shining on it. And so that was kind of the thought process here with how I was using these colors. So as I come down towards the ivory tone, I'm just mixing in some of that Java paint and gonna kind of blend it together. Now I'm really just looking to coat this at this point so you can see there, but did you see how it was like a little bit wispy? I was really happy with the way the paintbrush was doing that. And I actually will end up going back with a little chippy paintbrush that I have from Dollar Tree um, to kind of accentuate that look a little bit more because I thought it kind of gave that mushroom look. You know how when you look at the underneath of a mushroom, it's got all those little sections. So this kind of gives a nod to um, that texture that you see underneath the mushroom. So just blending some more and going back over it. Just trying to get it to where I want it. Adding in some lighter tones, going back and adding in some dark where it's needed. But you can see as I keep going over it, it's blending more and more. See there? So here I was still with my original paintbrush with the sheep skin tone and I just wasn't happy with it because it was just giving too much coverage. So I'm showing you my chippy brush and I used that and that was what I wanted. So you see that? how it's giving the little wispy kind of look to it. That was what I was aiming for. And of course, I'm completely impatient, so always have to be using my little heat gun to dry things. And I'm just gonna go back in now and accent it with some more of the sheepskin color chalk paint and give my mushrooms some little spots the way that you see on some mushrooms. And I just did that randomly. I didn't want it to look too perfect. So drying that up again. And now I'm going to cut down some floral foam and tuck that in there. And I was kind of figuring this out as I went, you guys. So with uh, the 
of flowers I'm going to be using. It was like the fourth or fifth set of flowers I'd picked out. So <laughs> I kind of uh, figure things out and, uh, and create on the fly. So I've got some moss in here, some Spanish moss that I'm just gluing down with the hot glue just to cover up that foam. And then I've got these cute little yellow, I think they're rose little like little mini roses and I'd gotten these from the Hobby Lobby I forgot to show it to the camera so I apologize for that but I believe they were a dollar 99 originally and then I always tend to wait for the sales so I'm sure I got it at least 40 to 50 percent off so just a couple of dollars worth of flowers because I end up using two full picks and it had those three little bunches on one pick And there you go. Isn't it cute? I love this. I'm so happy with it. Let me know in the comments what you think. And remember to give me a big thumbs up if you like it. So here we go with DIY number three. So I am going to be using a foam wreath form for this from Dollar Tree, as well as some more of the Spanish moss. And I have a ton of different picks here. Like I said, I tend to design on the fly. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to be using for this, but I'm going to use a lot of what was there. Not all of it, but a lot of it. These are all Dollar Tree um, florals. So everything here actually was from Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to use my hot glue and cover the foam wreath form with moss just so that it looks pretty. And if there are any gaps between the flowers in a little bit, you won't be able to see that green foam. It'll just be the moss. there we go now I did not do the underside you could do the underside if you wanted it to be completely finished I didn't feel it necessary for my own personal use if this were something I was going to be selling I probably would cover the back with fabric or something of that nature not necessarily the moss because I think it can get really messy and um, I don't know I just think it would be more of a finished look to have some other type of backing on it so I was showing you before, I'm just cutting these flower stems down with my wire cutters to just a couple of inches because I want to be able to press it into the foam form, but I don't want it coming out on the other side. So you just want to be mindful that you have enough of a stem on it to be able to press it in, but not so much that it's going to end up coming through and sticking out. And I'm just randomly going around my form and placing in the flowers where I think that uh, I need a little bit more distribution of the color. So I'm obviously doing this with a lot of mums. If you're not a big fan of mums, you could do this with hydrangea. You could do it with any other flower that you like. This is a really simple project. It's clip and stick and clip and stick. So you just go around the form and space the colors apart a little bit. And now I'm coming back through with these little sprays. I'm not even sure what kind of flower these are, but I thought they were really pretty. And they've got those little curly Q thingies sticking out of them. I don't know what you call that either, but <laughs> I thought these were fun. So I figured I would add them in a little bit. And then coming back in with some of these white berries that I thought were really pretty. These would probably be really nice for um, Christmas time too, or the holidays. So because I know not everybody celebrates Christmas, but um, around the holidays, those might be really pretty to use in decor as well. So if you get some of them now, you can always hold on to them. So we're making some progress. And then I had these little pumpkins that I clipped off, and so I'm sticking in some of the little pumpkins. 
because I thought it would be fun. Pumpkins are my favorite in this time of year, you guys. I seem to have something for almost every season. Pumpkins in the fall, bunnies in the spring. Winter time is snowmen. I love snowmen. So there you go. And we were on to DIY number four. Okay, so for this one, I am using a foam core board and a long piece of wood that I got from Home Depot for $1.18. Some sheepskin chalk paint again, and the decal I was just showing you that I created on my Silhouette Cameo. So first things first, I'm measuring out the foam core board. It was 30 inches wide by 20 inches tall. And so I need to figure out how to cut down my wood because I'm going to be using this to make a frame. We also want to make sure we're accommodating for the width of the wood because I'm not mitering these, right? You can see right here, I just cut them straight. I'm going to be attaching them with the wood glue that I was just showing you and just sandwiching those shorter pieces in between the longer ones. I believe I had cut those down to 17 and a half inches using my wood glue i was going to use my vices i think that's what those are called my wood vice i don't know i was going to use those it wasn't working out so i set them aside and i ended up just securing this a little bit more with my staple gun so wood glue to provide that long-term bond and it'll be a secure bond um, and then just for some instant additional support using the staple gun and these staples are going to get covered up eventually when we apply our frame to the foam core. Okay, so I'm going to give this a coat of the sheepskin paint, which again is like a creamy color. And I'm gonna give this two coats. here comes my heat gun again <laughs> and then I'm also going to use the sheepskin on the foam core and I'm going to give this one really good coat all over the foam core board heat gun is back I know this isn't a big difference in color, but it just softens it up and I feel like it goes a little bit better with the fall decor. It's not that stark white color. So I'm just looking for a little bit of warmth here. So now I'm just going to try and make sure that I've got my letters um, as centered as possible. I wanna try and keep these straight and have them end up being centered on the board when I'm done. So I went ahead and peeled off the backing that I had on there to protect it while I was waiting and this kind of sucked right on to the sign and then it wasn't going anywhere so I ended up trying to just make sure that it was all where I wanted it again but quite honestly it wasn't going to be going anywhere so I was just very happy that it was indeed where I needed it to be so I went ahead and applied that down And then I did the same with the fall piece once I took care of the hello. And for whatever reason, this one was really super sticky. I don't know if it's the vinyl I was using or I don't know what was happening, but I was struggling with uh, trying to get this one up. This was a new vinyl that I was using though. It was um, the Paper Source. I don't know if any of you have used that. Um, not overly impressed with it personally so I'm gonna have to try and uh, use something else I was really struggling with this particular vinyl even just trying to get it off of my transfer tape but 
you can see there it again just sucked right down onto my thing and I got a little bit of a, a crease in my first L <clears throat> but I was able to solve for that in a minute <clears throat> You can see that is really sticking <laughs> and usually I try to save my transfer tape and reuse it a couple of times but I was having such a hard time with this I got a little frustrated and so I just kind of bunched it up and I was like the heck with it <laughs> it wasn't worth it to me at that point I just wanted to get the the transfer completed so So now I'm just coming back in with my X-Acto blade knife, my craft knife from Dollar Tree, um, and just splicing the, or slicing, I don't know, slicing, I guess, and then splicing perhaps, I don't know, um, the L. So I just really just cut a, a slit through it and was able to have that sit. And it was such a small um, gap that you really don't even notice that it changed the height of the letter because it was like a millimeter. So there we go with that. Now back to the frame. Since it's dry, I'm going to be using my bare wax in dark and I'm just going to distress this a little bit. I'm using one of my chippy brushes from the Dollar Tree, applying a little bit of the wax and then going back through with a dry cloth just to rub that in. I'm going to do that all over the frame. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see maybe on the camera, but I think it turned out pretty well. Now we're going to go ahead and apply the frame. The foam core board was kind of curling up on me a little bit. I'm assuming it's um, from having used the heat gun on the chalk paint, but it might just be because it does that when you paint it. I'm not sure. Um, so I used some of my clamps to just connect it to the frame so that I could double check and make sure that I was placing it where it needed to be. Because I had already applied my um, decals. I just wanted to make sure that they were going to show up centered. I had debated putting the frame on first and then adding the decals, but I just thought it was going to be easier this way. Jury's out on my final decision in that regard. So at any rate, I made sure it was where I wanted it. I'm a little off frame here, but I'm applying my wood glue to the end and then I'm going to add my clamps back on just to hold those. Those are also Dollar Tree clamps. I think I got them in the automotive section. So I used the glue on the end. I did that on either end actually. And then I went back through and used my staple gun just to apply staples along the entire edge. And there we go. Isn't it cute? I love this. So flipping it over and I'm just going to use some jute cord to attach um, a hanging cord, if you will. I'm going to measure down from the top just so that I make sure that I've got the cord hanging at about the same location on either side. I don't honestly know if that's going to have an impact on how straight it hangs maybe wouldn't but I don't know recovering perfectionist here you might have heard me say that before <laughs> so that's what I did and then once I had it secured on either side I did go back and um, I flipped up the twine over the staple and stapled it again just to give it a little bit more security so that it was less likely to just pull through the staple and then just trimmed that off and here we are for the final reveal
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Thank you again for watching to the end. Please be sure to give me a big thumbs up if you liked today's video. Please subscribe and hit the little bell to be notified for future videos. I've got a couple of others popping up in just a second, so I hope you'll go ahead and keep on watching. Until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thanks again. Bye.